Hello class, welcome to the lecture for 1-4 from the Forrester textbook. Today we are going to be talking about composition of functions, but before we get to that, I want to ask you to try to remember when the worst mangling of a message ever happened. So like somebody told somebody who told somebody who told somebody and by the end it was completely ruined from what it was supposed to say. Now I'll bet you've got a story in mind, but in case you're an unimaginative person, I have a uh, link that uh, is done by two guys named Rhett and Link, and there's a funny video that they made a while ago about how Google closed caption destroys texts uh, in that same way. So give it a watch and then come back here. All right. So, game of telephone is a very good analogy for uh, composition of functions, f of g of x. You've probably seen this written before, you know what I'm talking about, and it is the mathematical functional equivalent of my mouth to your ear, and then your mouth to somebody else's ear, and on and on and on and on that goes uh, down the line. So. Uh, I want you to try to imagine how this plays out, how there's some real life uh, kinds of connections for this. We have two functions. On the one hand, we've got the sphericizer. It takes uh, whatever you give it and makes a sphere out of this particular uh, length and then, um, uh, or lengths, and then we've got the tripler. And the tripler takes uh, numbers and uh, triples them or it takes solid objects and duplicates them uh, in triplicate. So what is going to be the difference between when we have uh, t of s of r versus s of t of r? Well, as you can see, if we take a particular uh, length and then make a sphere out of that and then tripleize it, we'll have three spheres versus if we take a particular length and then triple it and then sphericize it, we will get a uh, sphere with three times the radius. So order matters, like we saw in the previous couple of lectures here, order matters a lot in algebra, in math, and so you have to pay attention about how the language of math is written, that unlike English, which is left to right, or Hebrew, which is right to left, math is inside to outside. So um, if you, if you want to think about how this plays out in our notation, you, you recognize that when we see something like this of uh, x squared plus 9 all divided by 2, that the order of operations has to be that we uh, square it, we add 9 to it, and then we divide it by 2. And if we ever mix that up, we're dealing with a different function. We're screwing things up and making them different than what people would expect. And you can do that when you want to, but you have to know that you're doing it. Just like in art, there are rules. You can break them if you know the rules, but that leads to, that's a conscious decision. There are no wrong notes in jazz, but you need to know what the note that you're playing is for. So um, let's think about how we might try to take that function that I just mentioned and represent it out of its composite parts. So if we have just squaring, and I call that g of x, if we have just adding 9, and I call that h of x, and we have dividing by 2, and I call that uh, j of x, then what is the correct way to represent x squared plus 9 all divided by 2. And so the temptation might be for you to think, well, it's just uh, g of h of j of x. But now remember what we just said, the whole inside to outside bit. Think about what that would do. If I start in here, then the very first thing that I'm going to do is divide by 2 which is not what I think you meant at all. So uh, what, if I just keep going, just to pursue this uh, bad example, then we have to 
have divided by two first, and then we add a nine to that, which looks like that, and then we square that, and we get x over two plus nine quantity squared, which is not what we wanted at all. What's the right answer? Put that in your notes. So another kind of example, so you remember we talked about that there's these different ways of representing functions, is that we might say um, here is the function of uh, f uh, and g of x, both of these are in this uh, graph from page 24 in your textbook, and they want to know what is f of g of 30. So what I do is I start on the inside. I find g of 30, which means I take my input, my independent variable, and I make it 30, and then I see that my output there is about 2.8-ish. It's hard to tell with your eyeball, and I'm not going to hold you to precise numbers. But that is the output from g of x, the inside part. And now I take that output and make it be the input on f of x. I make 2.9 2.8 be the input on f of x, and then I will get an output of around close to 200. So the, the answer then is to say that I take the input 30 onto g, get its output, take that output, make it the input on f, and then take f's output. There's a, it's, it's, it can be very complicated when you break it down, but this chain of the game of telephone and whose mouth is talking to whose ear, and then that person's mouth talks to the next person's ear. There's a way to break this down. So we've looked at this algebraically. We just looked at it graphically. What about numerically? What would it mean to try to do composition of functions with a table? So this can get very confusing too for different people, some people like this, some people don't, is that here we have a list of inputs and then we have two different outputs here, two different functions that take this particular input and output this or the other function outputs that. And now I'm wanting to say what is f of g of x. I'm wanting to string these together in composition. So I have to go slowly, inside to outside, and I recognize that if I'm going to put an input in of 1, I'm going to plug that into g first and get 5. So the, the first kind of breakdown of this might be to recognize that the part inside the parentheses is 5. The output of g at 1 is 5, and then what is the output of f at, uh, at 5? Well, that's 0. So that's what needs to go in this column. And now I need to kind of reset. And next, I'm going to take an input of 2, and I'm going to put it into g first. And uh, g of 2 is 3. And then I'm going to put that inside f, and I'm going to get an output of 6. Uh, keeping going with this chain here, input of 3, g of outputs 2, f of 2 is 4 g of uh, 4 is uh, 1, and so then uh, f of 1 is 3, g of 5 is 7, f of 7, rut row, that's not on my table. This function is defined by this table, and it's not there, so it is undefined. It doesn't exist, it's not part of the domain of this very limited function here. So uh, one more, g of 6 is 4, f of 4 is 2. So we just did uh, f of 2 up there, and that was 4. And f of 2 is 4, and g of 4 is 2. So no, they don't equal each other. All right, now here are some symbols that uh, have been uh, used in the history of math. One of the, the big problems, and I'm, I'm sorry, this is going to happen all year, and 
for the rest of your life and has already been happening, is that people just invent shortcuts for stuff. Jargon and technical vocabulary and technical symbols that saved somebody time somewhere but may not have been the most thoughtful or intuitive thing that they could have tried. So you can see here that what you might be used to representing as f of x plus g of x can be written short as f plus g all of x. Or what you might want to call normally f of x minus g of x is f minus g of x. And again with multiplication and again with division. So this has been going on for a while ever since uh, function notation and it is not too difficult to, to see those ones uh, there. That's addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Those are pretty straightforward. We've been doing the harder one, which is composition of functions, a function inside a function. But these are also written strangely and have their own particular symbols. Uh, what about the domain of these functions? Well, if you can't plug it into the inside, then you can't plug it in to the whole thing because it's got to start there and then go to the whole thing. So if it's not in both of G and F's domain, it's not going to happen. So what only what is in common to both of their domains will be in this smush together functions domain. And again, there's one exception this division one. Division is always a problem because we don't know how to divide by zero. Or rather, there are a lot of things that divide by zero could mean, so we have to skip that. It's not a function. It's not one output per input. But of all those symbols, plus, minus, uh, divide, multiply, all things you're very familiar with, the one that has nothing to do with what you already know is what looks like fog. Why in the world would fog be there? Well, it's not an O. It's actually a ring floating in the middle of the line. And you could probably think of it as the O in of, F of G of X. So there's the notation you're more familiar with, and there's this weird fog way of writing. And I'm going to have both on the test because they will come up in your calculus career. Now, we've been saying this, but here's another diagram that represents the same idea. You're going to take your function g, and it's on the inside. f of g of x means you've started with the g first. You do those operations first. And g has some limited domain. It can't go everywhere, or maybe it can, but whatever its domain is, you start there. Then you output from g uh, and see what it does as a range of, of outputs. And that becomes the input for f. That what has been outputted by g is inputted by f, and f may have its own restrictions. It may not like everything that g tries to give it. That might not be part of its domain. And then that gets even further outputted by f, and you get the output of the composition of functions. Now, Let's make sure that you understand uh, what we're talking about here. So here are two functions, f of x and g of x. f of x is x minus 2. Just take whatever number I give you and subtract 2. g of x is more complicated. It's uh, uh, 8 minus 2 times whatever the input is. So f of 3, that's not too hard to think about. You say 3 minus 2, you get 1. g of 3. That's not so complicated. You take that, you uh, multiply it by negative 2, you get negative 6, you add 8, you get positive 2. Simple operations. And the reason that you, you have to start with the simple is because when we nest functions, when we put them in composition, there's a simple order you can go through. f of g of 3 means that you find g of 3, which we just did, as 2, and then that becomes the input on f. And 2 minus 2 is 0. If I say g of f of 3, you don't start doing anything with g first. You find that f function's output first. And f of 3 we found was 1, and uh, 8 minus 2 times 1 is 6. So you work your way inside to outside. 
If you want to think of the movie with the emotions, Inside Out. Wasn't a very mathy movie, but it's a pertinent phrase for this lesson here. And of course, I'm a math teacher and I love to punish children, so there are all manner of crazinesses that I can do with this. We can go wild and put g of f of g of 3. And that means that you need to do g on 3, take that output, run it through f, take that output and run it through g, and what do you get? And this can go on ad infinitum, ad nauseum, that I can say put 3 as an input on uh, f, which we know is 1, then put that back into f and get negative 1, put that into g and get 10, and then put that into f and get 8. And this can just go on and on and on and on and on until you go blind. So be ready for that. This is what's coming. And not only do I expect you to be able to do this with algebra, with tables, with graphs, in your head, well, you don't have to do it in your head. You can use a calculator. I'm a big fan of calculator. If you didn't watch it, go watch the supplementary video that I made for 1-1 about the calculator because this calculator that you have, this TI-80, can do anything practically and you can take it with you on the ACT, the SAT, the AP, whatever you want to do, you can take this thing with you and it's amazing. So you need to know how to use it. So I'm going to show you how to use it. So what I want you to do is I want you to press the Y equals button and I want you to put in, and now here on my slide, it's not in parentheses, but you know that you need to put parentheses around this function in order to have it have a limited domain. So parentheses X minus three, close parentheses, X is greater than or equal to two and X is less than seven, close parentheses. That's all y1. y2 is going to be parentheses, negative 2x plus 8, close parentheses, divided by open parentheses, x is greater than or equal to 1, and x is less than or equal to 5, close parentheses. Did you got it? Good. Now, take that and pause for a minute and think about how you're going to use this f of x, g of x notation, except it's called y1 and y2, in the calculator to calculate these things. You should be able to look at the table and see all the values that are going on there. You should be able to calculate at the cursor, at the prompt, y1 of, of y2 of 6, y1 of y2 of 8, y1 of y2 of 2, and then graph and maybe turn off y1 and y2 and just use y3 is equal to y1 of y2 of x. All that should be possible for you. And if not, put a big highlighted note on your Cornell notes that you're taking for this video and ask tomorrow in class. And I'll be happy to see, or if you're one of the mousy shy girls or guys, come see me before school or after school and we'll make it happen. This is all doable. You can do this. I'll help you, okay? so. Pause the video, solve these things. Okay, we're back. You did it all, you solved it, you're a genius. I'm happy for you. So, you found that in order to calculate uh, y1 of y2 of six, you plugged in six into the g of x, the y2 got three, plugged that into f, got two, that's great. And then you kind of freaked out when you did the next one because it wasn't part of the domain and it didn't work and you couldn't get an answer, but that was right. So you needed to think about why that wasn't true and because I'm probably going to ask you why and not just want you to wrote, give me the answer, but to understand on the test and the quizzes. And uh, the same is true for uh, the last one that where the breakdown happened was at the F which does not uh, accept negative one as an input. It's outside of its domain. This uh, table here that you can see is uh, something that you should have been able to see in the calculator, except it would have said uh, y2 and y1 of y2 of x, but uh, you could be able to then tell the domain of the function, the composition function, the composed function. And again, the graphs are visible to you. You can graph y1, you can graph y2, you can make y3 be y1 of y2 of x and get this sort of thing. So 
If you're trying to visualize what's going on, here's the domain of f of x, here's the domain of g of x, and then only the overlap is the domain of f of g of x. And this is all from the textbook if this is too blurry. In order to prove that you watched this video, I would like for you to do problem number one, all four parts on page 29. And I talked pretty fast to keep this video short, so please look over 1-4 in the books. Uh, it can't help, it can't hurt if you thought any of this was confusing, but also ask in class, let's have a discussion, let's talk about it. I want you to understand. See you soon.